Well, after spending the last year working on a project shooting everything with the Pentax 672 and 120 film, I have never been more sure that I really want to try to find some sort of digital alternative to that camera, that system, and just a camera that I use for projects like that. It's a whole loaded conversation that I would love to get into soon, and we will do that, but today we're gonna look at one of the first options that I've been considering, and that's the GFX50R. My good friends, KEH Camera, they're sponsoring this video, so they've let me shoot with this for the last few weeks. And I've shot with this camera before, but after almost four years now that this camera's been out, I feel like it could be a really good option for someone looking for a digital alternative to you know what they're typically shooting with film. The GFX line is getting really popular these days, and I think if you're going to shoot any of the newer cameras like the 50S2 or the 100S, if you're shooting that side by side with the 50R, you're definitely going to feel that four year difference just in between frames and just going through the camera. It's not as fast as the new cameras, but if you're coming from a film camera, you're really not going to notice any of that. This is still going to feel pretty fast and just freeing, especially for the price, depending on the condition on KEH. These are being listed anywhere roughly from $2,500 to $2,000 at the time of recording. So in comparison to a Pentax system, a Hasselblad system, a Mamiya system, all of those plus film on top of that, the price of this digital medium format system these days, it's becoming more and more accessible. And when these cameras were coming out like the 50S and the 50R, it was really all about like, well, people don't need digital medium format. Cameras like this, this is meant for people who need it. You don't need this camera. This is absolutely overkill for most uses, but for the cost compared to, you know, other cameras that are out there, does it really matter what the other person is gonna use? I don't really think so. So yeah, you could spend that same amount of money on this camera on a film camera or on an APS-C camera or a full frame camera. It doesn't really matter. The fact that the price of what you can get out of these cameras just continues to drop on the used market. 2018, I mean, a camera that's discontinued now, adapting lenses that you already have from your film cameras or the, the GF lenses, the actual native lenses with full autofocus and incredible image quality you would expect from modern glass. It's just wild that this kind of system and this kind of image quality is so accessible to so many people. The biggest difference of the 50R from the 50S and then the rest of the current GFX lineup is the style and ergonomics of the body. This is more of a rangefinder style body. It's not a rangefinder, but it has your EVF off here to the side, so it has that rangefinder style shape, and so you typically kind of hold the camera like you would a rangefinder. It's a smaller brick-like shape. Um, I personally enjoy this shape, and I really wish this camera wasn't discontinued. If they were able to make a 50R2 the way they did the 50S2, I think a lot of people really would have gravitated towards that. It's surprising to me because the X100 series, the X Pro series, the XE series, those are really popular cameras in the X mount lineup. It's got like a really diehard fan base, I think. And a lot of people I think would have really gravitated towards the 50R2 if you had, you know, the same kind of updates that the 50S had. Things like IBIS, having a camera that doesn't have in-body image stabilization after I've been using a camera that does have it, like my Sony FX3 that I record these videos with, and the GFX 100S. This is also a camera I've been using lately because I bought this one. Uh, fun fact, this 45 millimeter f2.8, this is not on loan from KEH. It came from KEH, but I bought it from them. I also bought this 100S from a friend, and we'll talk about that in a video soon. But uh, in-body image stabilization, uh, the more I use it, the more I realize just how helpful it is for me and how shaky my hands are. So it might not be a big deal for most people, but once I've gotten used to using it, it's really made a big difference, especially just in overall sharpness. I can really tell when it's there. So having that in the camera, that would be amazing. Plus USB-C charging. Everything I have these days runs on USB-C. So if they had a 50R2 with just those two things added, that alone I think would have been really appealing to a lot of people. And I don't know why I'm you know, dreaming up or making a wish list for a camera that's already been discontinued. But Fujifilm, if you ever decide to open up an ear, I think you could have done well with that one. And adapting glass has been amazing on this system. The 45 f2.8 is an incredible lens, but obviously this 50 millimeter Sumalux is so much smaller. And even though 
It's a 35 millimeter lens on a medium format system. It's not medium format all the way up to like 645 film, but it's bigger than full frame. So it's sort of that, you know, in between extra medium. The 50 millimeter Sumalux, you're getting roughly around a 40 millimeter ish equivalent. And that 1.4 gives you this really wild separation, definitely rivaling medium format film. It does vignette because you're not covering that full sensor, but it's pretty easy to correct that in post. All in all, despite, you know, being discontinued and a little bit slower than the current lineup, for the price, the 50R, I think, is still a really good option. You're going to save a lot of money buying this over any of the newer cameras, and not only that, the price of film these days. Kodak, what are you doing? What are you doing? $50 for a half frame? Come on! If you're interested in buying the 50R, I'll have links for this one down below, as well as all of the other ones that are available through our sponsor today, which is KEH Camera. For over 40 years now, KEH Camera has been buying, selling, and trading used photography gear. Buying used gear is a great way to save money, and KEH Camera takes away all of the stress that comes along with that. They have a 21-day risk-free return policy for thousands of their items, along with a 180-day warranty included. If you need to trade in or sell any of your gear, you can do that directly on the website, getting a quote immediately, or you can even schedule a video chat with one of the buyers. That way you can show them the camera or lens, whatever it is you're trading in, in full detail. Anytime you're shopping with KEH, make sure you use the affiliate links listed down below. These are no extra cost to you, but they go a long way to support the channel here, so I greatly appreciate that. Also, to save some money or get a bonus on your quote, make sure you're using the codes on the screen right now, as well as in the description. These do change from time to time, so make sure you're using the correct code when you're shopping. Thank you again to KEH Camera for all of their support here on the channel. That'll be it for this video. If you want to see more videos on the GFX system, you're in luck. I have more already in the works and on the way, but if you want to see other videos, other digital camera systems that you think I should try out or maybe share in a video, uh, as well as older digital cameras, I really want to revisit some of the older ones that I had in my past. I know some of them are in stock at KEH right now, so I might make that happen if you guys are interested in that sort of thing. Uh, regardless, I've got other videos coming. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, supporting. Love you all very much. I'll see you guys soon.